to the next video in the series looking at the topics within higher geography. Today we are going to be looking at biosphere and going through all the different parts of biosphere that you will need to know for your exam. In addition to that, please refer to your textbooks and your own notes for added detail. In higher geography, there are three aspects you will need to know about. The factors that affect soil formation, the processes that affect soil formation, and finally, three case studies featuring soil types common in the UK, a brown earth, a podzol, and the glay. So in order to explain how soils work, we need to look at how they're made up. If we have a look at this diagram, it's important to know that from top to bottom, we can look at it as a cross section. In geography, we refer to this as a soil profile. Within the soil profile, we have different layers. In geography, we call them horizons. And each horizon is very distinctive in what it has in it. At the surface, we have something called an AO horizon. This is closest to our vegetation, and the O stands for organic, because of the organic matter in it. Below that, we have the A horizon, otherwise known as the topsoil. Below that, the B horizon, sometimes called the subsoil. And finally, at the bottom, we have the C horizon, sometimes referred to as parent material, sometimes referred to as regolith. Combined, this makes up our soil profile. When we consider the factors affecting soil, there are six that you have to know about. You need to show your understanding and be able to explain each of the soil forming factors, individually and how they influence each other. One very significant factor is climate. Climate has a strong influence on the temperature, the amount of precipitation and the type of vegetation growing in an area. These, in turn, influence the amount of water and air entering the soil, their temperature and evaporation rates at the soil surface. They also affect the amount of leaf litter and the rate of decomposition. Another important factor is vegetation. The vegetation growing in an area will influence the type and amount of leaf litter produced and therefore the amount of organic matter added to the soil. The type of vegetation will affect the acidity of the AO horizon as will the size of the roots which can bind the soil together and move nutrients about. A third key factor is the soil biota, or organisms, in the soil. For example, earthworms help with the mixing of the soil, the nutrients and the oxygen, both within a soil horizon and between different horizons. Microorganisms, such as bacteria, will affect the rate of decomposition depending on the amount present and the climate. There are three other factors that we need to have a look at. The first is parent material. And this is the bedrock normally found at the bottom of a soil profile and can dictate whether the soil will become waterlogged due to impermeability or whether it is free draining because it's permeable rock. It can be broken up through different types of weathering and also it can determine whether we have different colours in the soil, different acidities in the soil and different minerals in the soil. Another factor we have a look at is drainage and this can determine whether the soil will become waterlogged as water cannot drain away, or whether it is free-flowing and water and minerals can float through the soil. This is very dependent on the climate and also the parent material. The final factor to consider is relief, and this is about the slope of the land. If the soil is forming on flat land, it has the opportunity to build up in a nice thick soil. If soil is forming on steep slopes, it is often thin due to water running off and it not getting nutrients it needs. Next, we turn to the processes that affect the formation of soil. These involve the movement of water and the breakdown of parent material and organic matter. Decomposition is the breakdown of organic matter and leaf litter. As we've seen, this process is largely carried out by soil biota, such as earthworms and microorganisms such as bacteria. The climate and amount of soil biota present will determine whether decomposition will happen rapidly or slowly. Another process is weathering, and this is the breakdown of the parent material in the sea horizon. This can be done through physical weathering, such as freeze thaw weathering, or biological weathering, where the tree roots get all the way down to the sea horizon, breaking them up. Precipitation is also important. 
Where precipitation is greater than evaporation, we get excess water moving through the soil. This can be described in three processes, which we'll have a look at. The first of these processes is leaching, and this is a downward movement of water and minerals through the soil, mainly due to precipitation or snowmelt. Leaching can be further categorised into eluviation, when water and minerals exit one horizon, and illuviation, where the water and minerals are deposited into a new horizon. Conversely, where we have evaporation greater than or equal to precipitation, we get capillary action. And this is the upward movement of water and minerals through the soil. Next, we come to the case studies you will need to be able to describe and explain. These case studies are three different soil types common in the UK. First, we'll look at brown earth. Brown earth soils form in areas of deciduous woodland, which drop their leaves, creating a thick, nutritious leaf litter. The long roots of the trees will reach the parent material, resulting in biological weathering, the breakdown of rocks. The climate in brown earth is generally warm and dry. This means that precipitation and evaporation are almost equal. Therefore, in summer months, we tend to get more capillary action happening. And this is the upward movement of water and minerals through the soil. Whereas in winter months, it tends to be wetter and colder. Therefore, we get more leaching happening. And this is the downward movement of water and minerals through the soil. In the sea horizon, the parent material of brown earth is limestone or schist. And this is a permeable rock, which means water can pass through it. And also, because brown earths are found on gentle slopes, not only does it help water drain away, but it also helps the soil itself build up over time. The conditions encourage abundant soil biota, resulting in the rapid decomposition of the leaf litter into mull humus, which is porous and crumbly. The recycling of leaf litter results in a dark brown colour in the upper horizons. Iron and other minerals are leached down, giving the lower layers a reddish brown colour. The soil biota also encourage the mixing and aeration of the soil within brown earths. This means that the soil horizons are well mixed and are not very well defined. A second common soil type is podzols. Podzol soils form in areas of coniferous woodland. Here, the trees drop pine needles, which are acidic and therefore add to the acidity of the soil. When dropped, the pine needles create a thin leaf litter layer and will decompose slowly. The slow decomposition of a podzol is due to the climate, which is cold. Precipitation is greater than evaporation. We also have snow melt, and all of this leads to heavy leaching down through the soil horizons. The vegetation in podzols have short roots meaning that they never get past the A horizon. And also, due to the cool conditions, the wet conditions and the acidity of the soil, it limits the amount of soil biota within a podzol. This means we get limited mixing of the soil and we get clear, well-defined horizons in the profile. The AO horizon is black in colour, as a slow decomposition of organic matter leads to an acidic more humus. The A horizon is ash grey in colour. This is due to the heavy leaching of water and minerals into the B horizon, making it reddish brown in colour. This is known as podzolization. As part of this process, iron minerals are leached from the A to the B horizon, so they are eluviated and illuviated into the B horizon. Where they settle and are deposited, they form an iron pan which is a barrier of iron. This impedes drainage further and can cause water logging up through the podzol. Beneath this, we have our parent material, which is glacially derived. This can be broken up by physical weathering, such as freeze-thaw weathering. The third soil type you need to be able to describe is glay. Glay soils are often found in tundra areas, where the climate is cold, winters are long, and precipitation levels are high. This is a common soil type in Scotland. The vegetation can consist of grasses, lichens and mosses, which are adaptive to the harsh conditions. They also have very short roots, which limits the binding of the soil in the A horizon. Additionally, 
the lack of organic matter creates a very thin leaf litter layer on the surface. Due to slow decomposition, this then creates a very thin, black, acidic, more humus. This peaty soil is waterlogged for the majority of the year, which means there is limited oxygen available within the soil. This makes it challenging for soil biota to survive and live within the soil, therefore they are very limited. This creates very little mixing within the soil horizons, therefore they are very distinct and well defined. The microorganisms that do exist need to extract oxygen from the iron containing compounds in the soil. This changes the colour from red brown to grey blue. Some red mottling can be seen in small air pockets and is due to the reoxygenation of the iron in the soil due to burrowing animals or the soil drying out in summertime. In the sea horizon, the parent material is impermeable clay. This impedes drainage and contributes to the water logging in the soil. Typically, clay soils are found on flat surfaces, such as moorland or at the foot of a slope. This further causes water logging and prevents water from draining away. Here's a selection of exam questions from the last few years. In 2017, candidates were asked to explain the conditions and processes that led to the formation of glay soils. In 2018, it was a similar question about the brown earth. And in 2019, it was about podzol.